So I'm going to discuss just a bit in detail how it works. Uh, this is a so-called single phonon design. So uh, this is the energy diagram of the conduction band as a function of position inside the uh, uh, material. This is the core, is the active region. These wavy things are the square of the wave functions. And essentially, we control the layer thickness to uh, design the wavelength, OK? But then we have to design the population in uh, inversion between state 3 and 2. So how do we do that? Well, essentially, we know what the recipe is. We have to empty state 2 faster than it fills. So the idea is to place an extra level here, just below 2, separated by an optical phonon. Okay, which is around 30 milli electron volts, so that the electron in state two can scatter very fast through a resonant process of emission of an optical phonon. And so in this way, you can achieve the population inversion condition 3, 2, greater than 3, 1. It doesn't end here the quantum D design. It does no good to achieve this condition if the electrons here zip through and escape into the continuum. So we had to engineer the, relax the relaxation region here as a Bragg reflector for the electrons in the state so that they have nowhere to go. There is an energy gap. They can only go downwards and then outwards to these bands. Those mini bands are it's basically a, a quasi-continuum. And uh, so this, for example, a, a laser was made at Bell Labs in the earlier days by Claire uh, Gmacho, and it's... Uh, 7.5 7 micron uh, wavelengths. You can see the corresponding structures here. You see the depth of the well is typically 0.5 electron volt here. And again, it's this material system which is technologically available. See, I would say the beauty of uh, doing these QC laser that you can use well-developed, commercially available technological materials used, used either for other region of the uh, spectrum, like telecom laser, or for high-speed electronics. So you do not have to use um, materials that are difficult to make, such as small bang-up material. So the platform is technologically very established, and maybe that's the reason, one of the key reasons of the rapid progress. So now you see, if you want to really improve your population in uh, uh, version and basically want to go at a uh, 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 continuous wave at, at room temperature, you have to do something better. So the, uh, this was demonstrated a few years ago. You use a, a two phonon resonance here to get even lower po uh, population in, uh, the, uh, in, uh, in the, the uh, final state. And uh, this was led actually to CW at room temperature. And I'm going to show you now what the state of the art is basically now. First of all, when you make a CW laser, you just can't take a laser and uh, uh, a chip and uh, uh, cut it up, okay? You, you want a thermal, uh, uh, the thermal management is absolutely critical. So you have to use a thick metal, typical several micron thick. Use a typical buried heterostructure. So the active region is buried here. Okay, and here you have a high thermal conductivity material, in this case indium phosphate, to remove sideways the heat. You might want to thin down the sample, do flip chip mount, and, uh, and so forth. And uh, so you apply the voltage, of course, uh, like in any other laser between the top and the uh, bottom here. And uh, let me show you where we are now. This is work we've been doing John, uh, with a company, uh, uh, Pranalytica, in fact, uh, uh, led by a very well-known scientist in this uh, community, Dr. Kumar Patel, in uh, inventor of the CO2 laser and uh, many other things. So we have joined up a program. These are our state-of-the-art result of high-power, continuous wave QC laser at uh, a room temperature at a wavelength of 4.3 microns. You see I'm plotting here the power as a function of current. You see, we have power level up to 3 watts with power efficiency of the order of 12%. It's not only about band, band engineering. You have to, thermal management is absolutely critical. And this is, has led actually to uh, products that are being sold right now by this company. And uh, essentially system for infrared countermeasure. If you like, you want to blind a, a, a heat-seeking missile and uh, uh, so forth. And... Uh, 
Other applications which are very interesting include uh, handheld battery operated e, uh, e, uh, illuminators and uh, beacons. And uh, so it's quite re, uh, rewarding to see that these lasers are starting to penetrate in actually many uh, different uh, sectors. Now I want to show you, see, often when you improve the technology, you also can discover some interesting physics. And this was the case. In fact, uh, if you like, the rediscovery of something very interesting. In the early days of laser physics, well, you know, it was basically 10 years uh, later, Risk and Numeral and Independent Gram and Haken, they predicted the coherent in uh, stability of a laser. So the idea is this, that if you can have a rabbi frequency e exceeding essentially this effective relaxation, one over, rela one over the relaxation time, uh, essentially the, um, uh, the combination of dephasing and the uh, T1, you, you start to get a rotation of the population difference. That modulates the gain in a parametric function and the prediction is that you get sidebands and so you should see something like this. So if they did it for a, a single mode laser, it was extended and so forth. And this was always a somewhat of a controversial subject from an experimental point of view. But in QC laser has been relatively straightforward to observe. And this I'm going to show next. This is actually was done on state-of-the-art laser that we worked on with Agilent uh, technology. Again, making the point that you improve the technology, you can study some interesting physics. So this is, you see, up to a certain current, you see a single mode. Then above uh, the uh, so-called second threshold, the way Haken called it, you, you get into this instability. Essentially, the spectrum shows a dramatic effect. You have sidebands, okay, with up to hundreds of longitudinal mode. And if you look at the splitting here, you actually see that it's twice the Rabi frequency. And uh, the reason, again, here you are in a very favorable situation, a very high Rabi frequency. Why? Large dipole matrix uh, moment that you can design and high power level. So uh, the uh, relaxation time are very interesting to study. The relaxation dynamic, uh, we like to think of this. A QC laser, you have photon-driven transport, right? You have stimulator. You have combination of quantum transport with tunneling, and you have your electrons tumbling down. And when we are about the, la the laser threshold, actually stimulated the uh, mission drives transport. And uh, the group of Ted Norris at Michigan has done many studies in this, essentially using picosecond pump and probe, okay? So what you're doing essentially, you use a femtosecond mid-IR palsy to induce stimulated transition in an operating QCL, okay? And so that depresses the uh, uh, population for a short time. And you actually, you, then you probe the gain recovery time. And what you find out, actually, the gain recovery time is in a picosecond range. You know, it might be 5, 10 picosecond, and it has different time constants in it. Uh, it has the uh, photon or phonon assister upper state DK, and most importantly, the transport super super lattice. So this is a new feature, the gain recovery time. Uh, there is a knob there, which is the transport time through the, through the super lattice uh, uh, region. And uh, so it's actually interesting uh, how it happens. Okay, from this experiment, you can deconvolve actually the uh, relaxation time as a function of uh, a current. Okay, when you are below laser threshold and you do this pump probe uh, 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 experiment, you find the upper state lifetime is due to phonon assisted transition below threshold. And then what you do, you have a transition. And you see, because the spontaneous uh, mission time in this uh, in this system is much longer than the non-radiative time, so the QC laser is a very bad light-emitting diode, but a very good laser. Okay, the two things can go together. And so, when you are now, when you hit threshold, you you have a rapid transition from a non-radiative relaxation to a, a radiative relaxation, this time controlled by stimulated uh, emissions. So you can probe the evolution very nicely.